four of you will, will turn up in due course. Um, good afternoon and welcome to Auditorium 2. Hello. I'm your host for the afternoon, Edward Hands, Edward X on Wikipedia. Uh, we have three half-hour sessions for you this afternoon. The first of which is Tech News with Guillaume Pommier, Fighting Technical Information Overload. Secondly, we'll have with Jonathan Carney from Wikimedia UK, going off the boil, a summary of the leading theories as to whether Wikipedia has peaked yet. And finally, at 3.30, an analysis of Deletionpedia. This is a new-ish website that sort of saves all the deleted articles from Wikipedia in the hope that one day they could be resurrected, like uh, The Walking Dead or, or something. <laughs> anyway, um, hello, do, do come in. If you've got a question, come near the front. Uh, without any further ado, I shall pass you over to Guillaume Pommier. Thank you. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, my name is Guillaume. Uh, I've been a Wikipedian since uh, 2005 and I've been working for the foundation uh, since uh, 2009. And uh, at the moment, uh, well, I mostly deal with uh, technical communications and uh, one of the things uh, that I do uh, along with volunteers um, is tech news. So, who has never heard of tech news? Okay, um, so I, I hope that you will learn something today. <laughs> um, and uh, who is subscribed to Tech News? Okay. Um, and who has uh, ever translated Tech News? Okay. So I hope that there will be uh, more hands at the end of the of the session. Um, so let me just start. So Tech News. So basically, uh, a problem that we've been having uh, pretty much uh, since uh, Wikipedia was first created is that we have uh, many Wikipedians who care about articles and about writing articles and about uh, curating them. And on the other, on the other, on the other hand, uh, we have uh, software developers who care about improving the software and hopefully making the life of Wikipedians uh, easier. Um, but they don't necessarily know uh, what the other group is doing um, or what the other group cares about. Um, so Wikipedians want to know basically what is going to break their workflow. The problem is not that uh, they can't find technical information. The problem is that there's way too much technical information. Uh, if, you, if you look at the, uh, all the, the code changes and the reviews of the code changes and the bugs that people report and comment on, and, and then you have all the mailing lists, um, I mean, basically, someone who wants to follow all those technical uh, channels, uh, don't, I mean, that person wouldn't have time to edit anymore. <laughs> So the, the goal of Tech News is to basically do that for you. Um, so we're a, a small group of people who try to monitor uh, those channels and um, basically digest that into something that is uh, shorter and understandable uh, for Wikipedians and other Wikimedians. So um, yeah, I mean, uh, this is the, the channels uh, that I uh, talked about. And so um, Tech News is a weekly publication. So from uh, basically Monday to Friday, we monitor those channels. And when we see something that is likely to impact uh, a lot of Wikimedians, um, like, uh, I don't know, ch a change in the interface or a change in the admin interface um, or or some scheduled maintenance or something, we add it to Tech News um, so that uh, Wikimedians will be notified of it. Um, this is a, a, a visualization of everyone who has ever contributed to, to Tech News. Um, I just want to take a moment and thank all these people uh, because uh, it, it's very difficult to monitor all those sorry, all those um, channels. So the, the, the more people we have who come and add items to Tech News, uh, the easier it is to, well, to be exhaustive uh, in, in monitoring those channels. So um, as of um, two weeks ago, um, there had been, uh, well, uh, 1,685 uh, edits 
to tech news pages by the 68 contributors that you were, that you uh, saw on there just previously. Um, so one challenge when you when you have a technical newsletter is that you need to keep it simple because I mean uh, it's very easy to to write with uh, jargon and basically uh, it wouldn't be understandable by uh, someone who doesn't know about PHP and JavaScript and Garrett and I mean all those words uh, that are almost curse words uh, for non-developers. So we use uh, text uh, analysis tools to identify words that are um, long or, sen or long sentences or um, complex uh, grammatical structures. I'll uh, show you um, what we use uh, after that. I'm hoping that I can basically go through that presentation very quickly and then show you how we actually do it. Yeah, um, so once we identify uh, the problematic uh, bits of text, uh, we try to improve it. And uh, one, of the metric, uh, one of the metrics that we use is uh, called flesh reading is. I don't know if anyone is uh, familiar with that. Okay, so if you're familiar with it, then maybe you can, you can tell me more about it because I just know the, you know, use it on a higher level. So this is a, a history of, uh, of that metric for uh, all previous issues of Tech News. So we are getting uh, better at it uh, slowly, uh, but basically we, we try to keep it simple uh, so that um, for translators it's uh, easier to translate and so that people who don't have a translation um, well can understand it in simpler English um, I, I won't go into the details but uh, if it's green it's good and then we have the, the the translation part so from the beginning when we started tech news about a year and a half ago um, we, we wanted it to be a multilingual um, publication and that's not easy um, because we have translators uh, we have but we have a rapidly changing co uh, content because we weekly tech, uh, tech news is a weekly publication so basically what we do is uh, from Monday to Friday we um, we add items to the tech news draft and um, on Friday we uh, we we generally have um, a good draft, so we send that draft to the translator's mailing list, um, and and then on Saturday we freeze uh, the tech news uh, text, and and we tell the translators that uh, they can go ahead and uh, maybe finish the translations. After that, we don't uh, edit the text except for uh, small changes. Um, yeah, so basically translators have between two and three days to complete translations and the, the, the rhythm of tech news is uh, dictated by the fact that most translators are volunteers, so it's easier for them if we give them the, the weekend to, to translate. Uh, yeah, and it usually doesn't take too long to translate tech news uh, between 15 and, and 20 minutes, sometimes less, depending on the, on the length of, of the issue. And um, another uh, word cloud, I, I don't generally like uh, word clouds, but uh, I like this one because it, it shows how many people translate and contribute translations uh, to tech news. And once again, I want to thank all these people because um, a lot of uh, subscribers to tech news would not uh, get tech news in their language without all these people. And uh, I think yeah, there, there is uh, 200 and yeah, 239 translators uh, since Tech News uh, was was created, with over uh, 18,000 uh, bits of text uh, translated. We usually have about a dozen uh, uh, translations for uh, every every weekly issue, which is, um, as far as I know, um, I mean the the most uh, translations for any weekly publication uh, in the Wikimedia movement. Um, and then we have the challenge of basically taking all those translations and delivering them to uh, to the wikis and to the to their subscribers on on each wiki. So if you try to do this manually, it's um, well, it's possible, but it takes a long time, and you have to do that every Monday. 
So uh, we created a, a, a Lua script that basically um, goes through all the existing translations and takes all of that and puts it into a giant uh, switch uh, parser function. Um, and so if you have a, a French and Spanish and German translation and you're subscribed to Tech News on the Spanish Wikipedia, then you'll get uh, Tech News in Spanish on your talk page. And if there isn't uh, a translation in your language, you get it in English. I, yeah, so I explained this. Um, and, and because we're not the only ones uh, who may want to, uh, to do that kind of multilingual posting, uh, we also created a, a generic version of that Lua script so that anyone who wants to, to send a multilingual message to a, a bunch of wikis uh, can do this with only one line of wiki code. And there's also a detailed uh, tutorial, um, and we're also available to, to help uh, anyone who wants to do that. And the, the final part is, well, actually sending uh, the news. So we do this on Monday using the mass message extension, which I'm very grateful for. <laughs> and we also send the English version to the Wikitech ambassador's mailing list. You can subscribe through RSS and Atom feeds, and we publish the link uh, to social media channels uh, using the MediaWiki handle. This is a, a, a chart showing the, the number of subscribers uh, since Tech News was, was created. In, um, in blue is the, are the individual subscribers, so people who subscribe on their own talk page. And in yellow are the community pages. So a community page is like the, uh, the English Wikipedia's technical village pump, for example, where it's not uh, only one individual uh, who gets the message, is everyone who's watching that page. So at the moment, we have about uh, 300 individual subscribers and over 60 community pages. And well, we, we can't really know how many people uh, subscribe uh, through other means like uh, RSS feeds. Now, we, we can, uh, you can help us. Um, so if you're a developer, uh, you can um, add items that you think are relevant uh, directly to the next tech news issue. Um, if you're a techni technically minded uh, Wikimedian, uh, you can do that as well. You can help us simplify uh, the text. We have a very detailed uh, manual on Meta so that um, we, we wanted uh, tech news to, to be able to continue even if, um, even if both of us uh, were hit by a truck. Uh, if you speak more, uh, I mean, if you speak languages uh, other than English, then you, we would welcome uh, your help. Um, I think uh, the the next uh, issue, which is due uh, tomorrow, um, is I mean, you can still contribute translations uh, for for the tech news issue that will go out yeah, tomorrow. And you can subscribe to the translators mailing list um, to be kept informed of when translations uh, are needed. So uh, that was me. Uh, you can uh, contact me through those channels. You can grab me later today. Um, I'm just going to check uh, how much time I have left because if I have time, yeah, great. So um, now that you've had the presentation, I'm going to show you how we actually do it. Um, so this is the, the, next, the next issue, so the one that we have prepared uh, this week and that will go out tomorrow. Um, I'm saying we, but I actually didn't do any work on this one because I was here. So thank you to all people who actually prepared this one. Uh, you see that we have already a, a few translations in Arabic and Bengali, probably, and Finnish and French and Hebrew, etc. Um, so tech news is usually uh, fairly short. This one is even shorter, but the goal is to uh, really select uh, the most impactful uh, changes. We don't want to overwhelm uh, subscribers with uh, too much text, otherwise, well, there's no point in, in preparing tech news. Um, this is the, the manual, so it's very detailed and the goal is that if you haven't uh, prepared uh, tech news uh, ever, you should be able to do it by just following the steps. And we 
also have a, a detailed uh, checklist for the distribution uh, explaining exactly how to prepare the, the mass message. I'm just going to show you very briefly the two, the two tools that we use to check um, that the text of the newsletter is simple enough. So this, uh, this is readability score. We basically just paste the, the whole content of the newsletter here, and it gives us, uh, well, the, the flash reading is a uh, metric, and a few other uh, metrics that we don't really use and that are uh, mostly, uh, I mean, some are used to, to come up with uh, this metric. The other one that we use sometimes is the Hemingway app. Uh, it's not perfect, but uh, it can highlight. I mean, basically what we use uh, these tools for is to, to see red flags. It doesn't really tell us if our text is good, but it can tell us if it's bad. Um, so this is the readability chart that I uh, presented earlier. We, we keep an archive of uh, all the metrics uh, for all tech, uh, tech news issues. Um, and the reason for that is that if someone uh, more knowledgeable uh, than us uh, about that kind of uh, metrics wants to, to come and do some magic with it, uh, they can. Uh, we, we, we don't, but it's nice to have the data. This is the, the Lua module that we use and that I'm going to uh, demonstrate in a moment. It's fairly short, but um, it, it saves a lot of time uh, compared to doing it manually. This is the generic version uh, that can be used for um, any uh, multilingual message that you want to send to multiple wikis. This is the how-to. So we, we have a detailed how-to uh, for tech news, and we also have one for uh, people who want to send a multilingual newsletter using the generic script. And if you if you are uh, if you have this use case um, and the tutorial isn't clear enough, you can always contact us. So I'm going to to show you how the Lua script works. So this is the one line of wiki code uh, that we use to to pull together all the translations. So this is the the code for last week. So um, this is going to be issue number uh, 33. And I think we had um, Arabic and Bengali and French and, uh, and Finnish and French. We have more languages uh, than that for this, this, week, uh, this week's issue, but it's enough uh, for uh, this demonstration. So by just uh, you know, adding the, the week number, and the language code uh, for the uh, translations that we have. This creates, if I have Wi-Fi, yes. So this creates uh, the giant switch parser function that is going to, uh, to post, in this case, the Bengali version if the content language of the wiki is, is Bengali. So then it's just a matter of copy-pasting all of this and uh, pasting it into the mass message form. Uh, so uh, I don't know, has anyone uh, here ever used mass message? Okay, so basically you just give, it's a, it's a neat function. Um, you, you just give it a list of pages where to post and, and a title and a body, and, and then you just preview and send. So this is, um, it shows the only the English version uh, in the preview because we test it on Meta and the content language of Meta is English. This, this can be um, a weapon of mass de destruction of your personal time because if there's a typo uh, in that text, then you need to go through hundreds of wikis um, to, to fix it manually. So um, in this case, the, the list of uh, target pages are uh, some of my personal pages, so it's not a problem, but um, usually when we uh, hit the send button, we're very, very careful. Okay, so now, 
so this is the, the list of pages. Um, I'm going to go to my uh, talk page on the English Wikipedia and the French Wikipedia. So this is the, the text that I, that I just sent uh, using mass message. So you see that on the English Wikipedia, I get the English text. And on the French Wikipedia, I get the French text. And um, I think that's mostly um, everything I had to show. So if you have um, questions, not everyone at the same time, please. Yes? So the question is, um, the uh, people who write the Wikidata newsletter would like to experiment with, well, they're exper ex experimenting with uh, translations, uh, and the question is, if they want to use this tool, do they have to move the newsletter to Meta? Uh, so the, the short answer is no, and uh, I can show you, no, it's not education, it's outreach. So the, um, the people who write the education newsletter had the, the same question. And, um, and so what I did was I simply imported uh, through TransWiki, Transwiki import uh, the Lua module. And, and that way, they I mean, they can continue to, to write on their wiki. Um, they just need to, to keep the script uh, synchronized in case there are changes. But otherwise, you, you can just import the wiki uh, the, the script on Wikidata and continue and, and use it there. Uh, however, I think you'll need you'll still need to use uh, to send the message through Meta because mass message is only uh, enabled there for uh, global distribution. But that's already the case. Other questions? Yes. Um, all these uh, translation are they uh, somewhere extracted so that uh, language researchers? Can Um, so the question is, uh, can the, all the translations be extracted so that language uh, researchers can reuse, uh, reuse them? And that's an excellent question, and you should ask the language engineering team about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't know. Anyone else? So uh, when we first created, uh, sorry, uh, so the question is um, how coordinated uh, is this with the signposts and similar publications? So when we first created um, Tech News, we uh, reached out to the signposts and um, the similar community newspapers, um, basically um, telling them that we wanted to have uh, a global publication about technical changes and that it would probably be best to uh, join forces uh, so as not to uh, to duplicate work and um, so what happened is basically that tech news killed the signpost uh, tech report <laughs> um, I mean I, I don't know if it's a causation or just correlation but um, basically the, yeah the signpost uh, mostly stopped with the tech report um, but if if someone uh, wants to collaborate on this from th someone from the site post uh, wants to uh, reuse some of this uh, at some point I think the technology report was discontinued because uh, nobody had time to do it and they were just copy pasting tech news and and people felt that there wasn't much value in that sure yes Um, so, do we have any insight on the readership? Well, we have the list of subscribers, um, but that's just a list of usernames. Um, so, I mean, we see that uh, some of them are known usernames. I mean, I know some of them, but 
yeah, apart from that, um, I don't have uh, much inf much more information. Um, so if you go to the tech news page on Meta, um, there's a, a, a big blue button to, to subscribe to, to tech news. And it's the same page where you can see the list of uh, existing subscribers. So if you want to to dive into who these people are, then well, at least you have the, the list, but yeah, that's all we know about them. Anything else? Okay, yes? It's, I, I don't consider myself to be a very technical, geeky sort of person. <laughs> So the question is: um, Is um, should I uh, should I subscribe to Tech News if I just if I'm more tr interested in creating content? And yeah, um, well, it depends on how attached you are to your workflow and and your interface. Um, if you if you like all the new fancy features and you're just happy to accept any change, uh, then you probably don't need to subscribe. Um, if you want to have a say in the new features that are uh, developed and if you want to know when your favorite feature is going to be moved to somewhere else or removed or, uh, or whatever, then you should probably uh, subscribe just to, to be kept informed. And um, I mean, tech news will come to your talk page, so you can just you know glance over it and if you see nothing that uh, uh, scares you, then you can just wait for another week and see what comes next. And if you see something that you know is is exciting or something uh, that is scary, then you you always have a link to learn more about it. And if you follow that link, it will be more technical, but at least you will know where the discussion is happening. I think I'll, I think I'll give it a try. <laughs> and you can unsubscribe at any time. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guillaume. You finished two minutes early. That is a first today. <laughs> much appreciated. Most people are, are keen to overrun and not leave any time for questions. I hope that was a very well planned out, thoughtful talk. Thank you very much for that. And I've learned something, and I am, I will subscribe. I'll give it a go. Maybe I will become a geek. Um, right, we've got two more talks this afternoon, each a half an hour long. In half an hour's time, we're going to be having, at 3.30, we're going to have Casper Suren. Oh, I better say, are you here, Casper, yet? Don't worry, he's on his way, I'm sure. And he's going to be talking to us about his project, Deletionpedia, the value of inclusionism, where they collect together all the um, deleted articles so they can hopefully be later resurrected when these people perhaps aren't really notable, or when they can come up with a better justification why these people, these articles should be on Wikipedia. But before then, we've got coming up next to you in any minute now, we've got going off the boil, a summary of the leading theories as to whether Wikipedia has peaked yet. Is it all downhill from here, folks? No, I suspect the answer is no. It's just a question of how you determine and look at the metrics, what you mean by peaked. But Jonathan Carty from Wikimedia UK to talk to us about um, has Wikimedia peaked. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, can anyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Can everyone hear me, including the people at the back? Excellent. That's good. Um, uh, I am Jonathan Cardi, otherwise known as user of We're Spill Checkers, partly from the English Wikipedia, partly from Commons, and from about 20 or 30 other wikis as well. Um, this is mostly focused, though, on my experience on the English Wikipedia, and though I'm an employee of Wikimedia UK, this is all completely irrelevant to my day job, well, almost irrelevant to my day job there. Um, so this is a, um, a gentle romp through the leading theories as to whether the, uh, the community has gone off the boil, and if so, why? Um, and um, I hope to finish early enough that there will be room for questions at the end. Um, 
Most commentators seem to agree that the community changed circa 2007. Editing levels appeared to peak in April 2007. Article creation, at least on the English Wikipedia, peaked. Editor retention seemed to start to fall. Uh, request for admin ships, best year ever was 2007, um, before it fell off a cliff in 08. Um, and, but readership continued to increase up until very recently, and arguably so does quality. So it kind of depends on what your, what your criteria are for, for, for peaking as a community. Um, the proportion of our readers who edit is steadily falling, and that's almost the one thing everyone can can agree on and, and, and understand about. Um, the proportion of editors who stay for their hundredth or thousandth edit is falling. In fact, if you if you look at the the, cycle, the life cycle of an editor from making their first few edits through to um, retention after people have peaked and, and gone away, there's only one bit of that whole loop that's healthy, and that's that we're still getting several thousand new people a month doing their first few edits. That's the only that, that new editor um, uh, test, testing bit is the only bit that, that's healthy. Um, so part of it, one of the main, main groups of theories, is that this is a cost of quality. Uh, Wikipedia gets better every year, Re or better every day even. Readers are less likely to encounter vandalism or typos. More of our information is well cited. Articles that were featured in our early days are now likely to be defeatured even if they've improved since they were first promoted. Um, the downsides of this are that some of our existing editors haven't made the transition to the new standards, and some of our entry paths for new editors have been all but lost. Um, in particular, um, more and more Wikipedia content is verified with inline citations to reliable sources, and people who don't source their edits are now being driven off by the increased trend away from tagging unsourced edits with that familiar citation needed. Has everyone got one of those citation needed um, key fobs? Or I've, I've been trying to get them to produce flip flops that will leave citation needed down the beach. You know, and it's my, my ambition to, to get them to on, on sale at some point. Um, and it didn't seem appropriate to give them away for, for at London. Um, nobody would have been using them. Um, but we've seen, a, a, I think that most of you will have noticed this, we've seen this trend that uh, fewer and fewer people are actually putting that citation needed thing in tag onto unreferenced content. More and more editors are just reverting it, almost as if un adding unsourced information is is has been treated almost like vandalism. On that, um, now we don't know what proportion of our of our unreferenced old information is actually untrue. We know that there are some things in there that are that there were complete hoaxes and nonsense. Um, um, we don't know what proportion of the stuff which appears to be well referenced is actually complete nonsense and no relation whatsoever to that lovely little BBC reference or Guardian reference that's been put at the end of it, because um, very few people are actually checking that. Um, so we don't actually know to what extent this drift towards um, greater um, referencing is, is, is improving actual quality, um, but we can be pretty sure that, that a bunch of people who used to write paragraphs of text um, are finding that either they, they, they've either had to start referencing that or they're gone. Um, the strengths of this theory are that it chimes well with the experience of our stalwarts and that if it turns out to be true, we needn't really worry about unduly about the gentle decline in the size of the community um, because the people that we're keeping are the people we really want to have, i.e. the people who add referenced information and write that sort of content and I'm sure if you've had discussions with people who said, I, I tried to, delete, to add stuff to Wikipedia, it got reverted, it got deleted. If you ask them, did you reference that information? The answer is usually no. Um, so it's a thing. Um, we fix typos too quickly. Now I'm guilty of this as much as anyone. Um, one of my, my main activities as a volunteer editor is I fix typos. Um, I fix the sort of typos that a normal spell checker won't even spot. I'm the guy who abolished the Olympic sport of synchronised ventriloquism. Um, you're welcome to throw a discus, but if you throw a discus, I will nick that last S away from you. Um, and I also patrol a number of others. I've dr dramatically reduced the amount of staring that takes place in Bollywood movies. Um, you're welcome to be uh, co-starring, co uh, but not co-staring in, in films. Um, 
the drawback of, of fixing things too, too quickly is that this is one of the entry level activities. If people spot a typo and fix it, they've made their first edit, they've become a Wikipedian in some sense, um, and they're losing that opportunity. We need to find some other way of doing that. Um, the same thing applies with vandalism. Um, it used to be that as a, as a reader of Wikipedia, <coughs> you had a reasonable chance of spotting vandalism. Um, you would occasionally spot vandalism. Um, and then we got to the point where the bots were reduced, were removing vandalism, reversing it, the moment it was being created, along with some of our enthusiasts. Um, and now we've got to the point where the edit filters are actually preventing that vandalism from taking place in the first place. Now, in almost every respect, that is good news. I don't want to criticise my fellow vandal fighters. I almost said a fellow bots, but I'd be giving away myself away there. Um, I, I don't want to criticise them for averting vandalism quickly. I'm just making the observation that that has lost us a second major way of recruiting new members of the community, um, and we need to find other things that will bring people in to the community. And some of those things, um, I would suggest, would be the, the obvious ones would be the GLAM program, the education program, um, and other outreach routes, which may be getting us um, a, even a different, different sort of newbie on there. More contentiously, we need to decide as a community whether adding unsourced new information is still acceptable. Now, I think on the German Wikipedia, they actually have a system where when you're saving an edit, it prompts you and asks you, what is your source for this? And I would suggest, and this is going to be controversial with some people, that what we're currently doing is a recipe for newbie biting. At least what we're doing on English, and I suspect some other places. Um, either we need to change the, the culture there to say, um, if people add new unsourced stuff, um, tag it, try and improve it, don't just revert it, or we need to change the, 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 the editing um, process so that when people are added, adding information, if they try to add something that's unsourced, the system actually warns them, you can't add a paragraph of text without giving us some sort of indication of where you got that information from. Uh, the, but the current situation, I would say, is just a recipe for newbie writing. Now, there are also some external things that affect whether or not we've gone off the boil. Um, the web is a fast-changing environment, and perhaps we've reacted better to things that, um, we've, that, that might affect our readership figures than our readership to ship figures. So our readership has been going, most of the last few years it's been going faster than the, the internet, but our editorship hasn't. Um, and one of the things that's changed is competition. Um, we are, we may be the only encyclopedia in most languages apart from Chinese, and I hear Baidu is going to go into Arabic and Portuguese to compete with us, um, but for most languages we're effectively the only encyclopedia, and I suspect ma in many other products like Witch and Read are the only one around. Um, but when it comes to competing for editors, competing for volunteers, there are lots and lots of things out there. At an extreme, there's charity shops and things like that, but there are lots of crowdsourcing opportunities. Uh, people nowadays can categorise paintings or write recipes, they can write how-to guides. Um, there are lots of people who are competing with for similar sorts of volunteers, um, and many of them have got better software um, or friendlier environments, and we need to be aware of that. On that. Um, another thing that's changed, um, that was steadily changing in the 2000s, and I think most, um, and most countries, well, America and certain other countries have, have significant change. Most um, businesses have changed on this, is that um, web monitoring software. A lot of Wikipedia, if I'm honest about it, a lot of Wikipedia was written by people at work. Um, the apocryphal story of the guy who, who um, was asked, why didn't you look up a book? for that information you're, you're, write, you're, you're writing up, that article, said, um, I can sit at my desk writing, um, writing Wikipedia on my PC screen, but if I start consulting a book at the same time, my boss might object. <laughs> the, that, <clears throat> that is something that ha will have changed, um, particularly in the United States, but also in the United Kingdom. There are companies that have got very sophisticated web monitoring software that are monitoring what employees are actually doing now, there are some countries in Europe where that's 
contentious in privacy terms because the privacy legislation is much, much tighter. Uh, but certainly in North America, um, if, you, uh, if you're spending hours of, of each day editing Wikipedia articles, um, sooner or later your name is going to be one of the people in the next round of redundancies. So I suspect we've lost a lot of those editors or they're spending less time on it, they're now editing in the evenings, etc. Um, the advantage of, the, well the good thing, the silver, the silver lining about that particular process change is that it's only one subset of our editing time that has gone and it's not that we're in some sort of death spiral, it's that one of our components has, has um, has declined somewhat. Um, there are also some internal things that affect um, what we're doing. Um, editing on the English language Wikipedia, and I apologise that I keep going back to that, but it's the one I know most about, um, has fallen significantly since the 2007 peak. Um, it took 37 days to clock up 10 million edits in April 07. It took 58 days to do that in, in the beginning of 2013. Um, it's taken over 60 days for the comparable one now. So there has been a really significant um, slowdown in the number of, of, of days it takes to do 10 million edits. Um, however, this is only just part of the picture because in 2009, um, the edit filters, which originally were called abuse filters, were introduced, or the software that enabled them was introduced. Now, has anyone here, is anyone here familiar with the, the edit filters, formerly known as, right, so a few people. So, um, for those who aren't though, and I apologise for boring those who aren't and, and uh, who are familiar with them, um, is that this is some software that, that, that came in 2009. It enables um, uh, members of the community to put rules into these filters to say, if you are going to replace a paragraph of text with the word poop, then you need to be a whitelisted editor before you can do that. If you're an IP editor or, or a newbie, you're not allowed to make that change. So two or three years back, I patrolled the word poop. I checked all the articles we had on there. I ignored ones that were part of poop decks and things like that. I found lots of vandalism. A couple of years ago, I stopped actually patrolling the word poop because I wasn't finding enough vandalism there for it to be worth my while. The edit filters have picked it up. Um, now, that's wonderful in all sorts of ways. Um, it's lost us, if we're worried about the number of edits we have, it's lost us a huge number of edits. And not only has it lost us those edits, it's also lost us millions and millions and millions of reversions of vandalism, which are good edits. So it's lost us those good edits as well. And it's lost us all those user page warnings. <laughs> and, and it's lost us the, block, the AIV reports and the block messages. So not only, not only have we lost this vandalism, we've lost a larger amount of good edits than we've lost bad edits. And that's, but it's a good thing that we've lost that. It is a good thing that we've had this, and we've had a significant part of the fall in editing since 2007 has been the effect of the edit filters. Whoever wrote the edit filters, if somebody tells me their name, I will award them a bond star. I hope other people have as well. Um, but there has been, um, a con those people who just fixate on the amount of editing taking place, and unfortunately that's one of the key indicators that some people regard as more important than anything else, um, will tend to say, well, edit if you just look at that figure, it looks like we've got a major problem. A very large part of the change since 2007, a very large part of this near halving of the editing level, has been the loss of, that, of those edits. Um, and I think it's actually gone beyond that, and maybe one of the people who works on these can confirm this for me, because I think that we've now got edit filters in there which subtly try and stop people from doing these continual English to American English um, back again edits, which were, um, I used to see lots of them coming up on my watch list, they're now relatively few, I think we've got the message across a bit, but I suspect it's an edit filter that's trying to persuade people not to do that. Um, so without the edit filters, the post-2009 uh, decline will be shallow or there might even be an increase in the underlying level of editing. Unfortunately, nobody, nobody really knows um, how this works because the, there isn't an exact equation between an edit filter and a particular level of editing. 
people behave differently if the computer doesn't let them change something than if they change something and a minute or two later it's reverted and they won't and end. So it's, it's, it's a slightly different situation, it's very difficult. We're, me we're me not just measuring apples and pears, we're, we're measuring apples and apples, but one apple is shares in a company that sells computers and the other one is a record company. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> our dated software in the age of Facebook and some of you have heard, I think there's something called Twitter out there and various other things in the age of Facebook our editing interface sucks it's still attractive to those of us who are nostalgic for the experience of 1980s programming <laughs> or who are sufficiently tech savvy to resolve an edit conflict can I just ask how many people here have had an edit conflict and how many of you know how to resolve them? Is that almost everyone? And how many think they're, they're no, no, no particular rotation, they're, they're, they're fine to get? <laughs> <coughs> we, we probably need a WYSIWYG editor, um, and we certainly need the, the software to resolve more edit conflicts without losing edits. Because if you're a little bit techy, if you're experienced Wikipedian, there are ways of resolving an edit conflict without saying, I've been, I don't like this, I'm going away. Um, but for a lot of newbies, um, my suspicion is, and I, I, must, I don't have statistics on this, but I, I have one or two empirical bits of information. Um, if, you, if you're creating a new article, um, you currently get an edit conflict each time somebody like me categorizes it, let alone you create an article, you're trying to add another sentence on to it, I'm categorizing it, somebody else is templating it as being unreferenced. And each of these times, if you're the, the new editor using the, the slow down by using the, edit, um, the visual editor, you're likely to be the one who loses that edit conflict to somebody like me who's just clicked a couple of key depressions and clicked a, 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 uh, either a template or a category onto it. Um, so we need, um, we need to improve those edit, um, we need to reduce the number of edit conflicts on there. This isn't something which is necessarily going to make the thing continue to deteriorate, apart from the fact that people are used to something better. And, but unless we keep up with that, or, uh, unless we keep up with what's available, we're going to find it more difficult to recruit new people. Um, in 2010, we changed the default user skin. Um, does everyone know what I'm talking about when I say we shifted from monobook to vector? Yeah, quite a few people were right. I looked at the discussions that took place around that time. Um, I joined, I started editing in 2007, so I'm one of the people who's, who uses monobook. Um, but I, took, I, I looked at some of the discussions that took place in the, uh, around that time, and the justification for shifting to vector was that we were switching from, we, we wanted to increase readership, we were switching from a, a skin that was optimized for editor usage to one that was optimized for our readers. <laughs> and people seem to forget that that was the reason for doing this. So we've paid a price for that. Um, some of the things which are, which are cluttering the monobook skin um, are hidden away behind little menus on Vector. And as soon as you hide away an option, you make people less likely to use it. So one of, our, one of the things that we could potentially be doing is saying, okay, for our readers, a nice clean skin, um, a nice clean screen which doesn't have many editing options, that's fine. As soon as people start hitting edit, we should be changing that, we should be giving them um, more of a monobook look, more, more of the editing, more of the tools they use should appear. Um, there are some internal things within the community. In 2007, the longest serving editors in the community have been here for six years. Today, we've got some veterans who've been here for 12, 13. Um, that time difference changes the structure of the community. It gives time for cliques to form, perhaps for arrogance, to, well, yes, definitely for arrogance to creep in. Conscious and unconscious changes made by the community include um, template bombing. 2007 was a key year in the transition of Wikipedia from the so fix it culture that built us and, and that gave us our golden age um, to the 
so template it for some hypothetical others to fix culture, <laughs> which now is a key part of, of what we're doing. And if you're um, if you if you're a new editor and you write some stuff and somebody then comes along and corrects a couple of typos, maybe moves some formatting around, etc. You feel that you've been collaborated with. Those of you who remember when, when you first edited, I remember the, the, my first interaction with, with somebody else on Wikipedia was somebody had categorised the new article I'd written. And I was very glad, I, I was very grateful for that. If we'd had the new Wiki Love thing, I'd have thanked them for that. Um, that, was, you know, that was my first positive interaction with another Wikipedia. Um, nowadays, the equivalent article I was bound to have been unreferenced in those days because I didn't reference the thing for at least two years after I joined. Um, it would it would have been templated for deletion, etc. Um, so template bombing is a major problem. Some of these, some of those templates, we can shift to things like hidden categories. And I think some of that has now happened. So, for example, if an article is an orphan, that should be a hidden category. If it's uncategorized, that, that's a maintenance thing which which new editors are not going to be interested in. And it shouldn't be disfiguring them, I think. Um, the advantage of this theory is that it's easily reversed. Um, but there's also a conflict out there. There are some people who believe that new edit the templates are an important way of communicating with new editors before they leave. Um, and, that, and so that templates needed to be added as quickly as possible. Um, and there are people like myself who think um, that if the quicker you hit a new editor with a template, the more likely you are to drive them away. It would be good if we could have some research into that, and I think some people might change their behaviour if, if we simply knew which they, way that was. And we may even be able to change the software to say, um, let's, let's reduce the, the change the, the new, ed, new article creation process so that templates only take effect deletion templates only take effect after a certain time. The only ones that we should be going in in the first few minutes should be things like, this is an attack page, this is vandalism. Delete those ones by all means. But other things, do we really need to tag at the beginning? Um, another change that's taking place is um, the greying of the pedia. Um, we are a much loved source for the mobile generation. I have various nephews and nieces. They think it's cool if bizarre that, that their uncle edits Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. um, we are a much loved source for them, but not one they can readily edit. Um, as any regular UK meetup attendee can confirm, Edward can confirm, the community, or at least parts of the community, is rapidly ageing. Uh, I first went to a meetup in 2009. I was one of the oldest people in the room. There were more oh, oh, at, at the meetup. There were over 20 of us at the meetup. And apart from myself and one other guy, um, they were almost all a generation younger than us. Nowadays, there's a whole group of us of my sort of generation. Um, we're changing rapidly on that. Um, and part of that, um, part of that is, is the, the change in technology on that. That the young today have got these little mobile phones, uh, or they've got tablets, and they, they don't have the equipment which enables them to actually edit the PDF. Um, the good thing about that is that if the average wiki career of a teenager is to sort of 18 months, the average wiki career of somebody who, who joins at or close to retirement is that they're around until they die, go senile or get banned. Or all three. They can be contributors to each other. It's, it's in the, yeah. Um, there is there is a whole issue around snark, um, incivility, being nasty to each other, um, and there are various conflicting theories as to what constitutes snarkiness or incivility. There are some things that are, all, are, are very obvious. You get a rape threat, that's that's incivil. Um, but there are other things where is this um, is this good quality editing, templating people. Adding, un, adding an unsourced tag, etc. Um, is, is that incivility? Some people might say it is, or if you, that's presumably what you're doing. If you adopt a philosophy of taking away more templates than you add, then I would say you're, being, you're contributing to making the situation better. Um, but there is, um, there is an issue of, of 
how incivil our site we are compared to some other sites and we've got some long-term people who um, yeah we've I think some of us know some of the issues on that <laughs> um, there's also an issue about jargon and cliques and communicating in jargon and maybe we need to find some ways of, of resolving that and again that makes uh, as, as a more in, impenetrable organization for people to join and if you do a couple of hundred edits and you're spending a few hours on a new hobby and people are ignoring you and they're communicating in a language that you haven't managed to break then or, or crack into then that m may also contribute to um, feeling detached from it um, I've got a couple of other things but they're less important than listening to you guys with any questions so lady in the six or something like that Good faith and reversions. Um, that, yeah, that that would sorry reversions of good faith edits. Um, that would be that. That's one possibility, um, and I'm and I'm not sure what the easiest ways of doing that will be. Um, and one way would be to to say we expect it takes time for people to get their legs. Um, it took me a year or two. I, I wasn't exaggerating from when I started editing to when I started grudgingly saying well if I'm going to add content I will actually add references um, and people from a more academic background would would have taken to referencing like a duck's water I don't think somebody like me would be able to join the community nowadays but it's, it's a very good point I think it fits in with what I was talking about with unsourced but maybe broad. sorry the gentleman on the other side of the, the aisle um, so the major projects of the foundation that are aimed at editors visual editor the mobile front end and the discussion are clearly going to change the, the culture of the editor culture of Wikipedia. And I wonder your opinion on this. Do you think it's a good thing to, to have these tools supplied and do you think they'll be used well? Um, hmm. Different, I've got a very different opinions on, on different tools. Um, I think Wikilove um, has has turned out, I was a bit cynical by that when it came in, but I, I like the fact that if I've done a batch of, of typo fixes, um, when I next time I go onto Wikipedia, I usually see a bunch of, of thank yous there. I used to be able to do a thousand um, typo fixes without anyone paying the slightest bit of attention. Now, if I do a hundred, I'll get a handful of, of, of thank yous down the screen. That's a positive. Um, the, vi the visual editor, um, I was one of the people testing it in spring of last year. I was really keen that we have the visual editor. I thought it was really, really important for the future. Um, and I was very, un I was saddened that after we said it wasn't ready to go in, it went in. Um, one of the problems that we have with the development at the foundation is that they're writing things on brand new kits that work on relatively new kits, um, but can be slow as a dog when you're dealing with five or six year old PCs. And a lot of our editors, and particularly the ones we really, the, the person we should be really thinking about is somebody editing on a 12 year old PC in a Bolivian internet cafe. And I've, I've edited from an internet cafe in Bolivia, and I can assure you, or I've, I've used email from there, I can assure you the, res the, the speed you get is, is appallingly slow. And we should be thinking about that sort of person, not some city trader in, in London who gets a brand new PC every six months. As I said, it's clearly going to change the culture. It, it's, it's, it, some of these things are going to help. Um, some of them may not help. Um, and flow is going to be an interesting one. 
if it's as bad as the um, visual threads, then it won't help. Um, any, any more? Any one last question? I think I've run out of time, but um, has, has the next presenter arrived? Because if the next presenter hasn't arrived, I will keep answering questions until he does. Or she. <laughs> so, gentleman down the front. Andrew Garrett. Right. Okay, so the, the, the guy who um, created Liquid Thread uh, also created the, the, the edit filter, so he's in both my good and bad um, Another Another question or comment? Uh, do, you think that, do you think that it's BLP that caused uh, the citation needed to actually die naturally because uh, even though it's not a BLP, now we see that whatever things are unsolved, we just refer it because we are more inclined to work with her. Um, possibly, um, possibly, uh, and, uh, and maybe it's also that, that we had a whole load of vandal fighters in the community who no longer had vandalism to fight, and, <laughs> and, and, and we used, and they may be a bit more polite when they treat unsourced stuff as, as we used to treat vandalism, but it's a polite message, but it's been treated in the same sort of way. A gentleman in about the seventh grade by the edge. There's two things that, that, that affect on that. Um, one is simply making an edit on there where I'm a great believer in flag revisions and so on. I wish we had it on the English language Wikipedia. Um, on the rare occasions when I make an edit on the German language Wikipedia, I have absolutely no problem that it doesn't go live immediately and it waits for somebody who actually speaks German uh, rather than one who would struggle to order a beer in it to actually say, to actually say that that edit is, is hopefully a good edit. Um, when it comes to new articles, we haven't quite got it right yet, in my view, in that if you, new articles, to my mind, belong in main space. And we need to have some sort of way of, that, that's the only place where we've found ways of collaborating on new articles. Um, and what I'd like to see would be new namespace, main space change so that if you don't have the auto patroller rate right, when you create an article, it's non index it's um, it's maybe not even seen by anyone unless they're a registered editor. But um, so it's marked or it's marked as draft until somebody accepts it. But at that point, while it's marked as a draft, that's the point when you've got several days for collaboration, for improvements, etc. And yes, if it's a copyright violation or if it's vandalism, then it can be just deleted. But for anything else, it, it has a few days of collaboration before we make the decision about keeping it or otherwise. That's the ambition I've got, but then I have been described a, as a hemp-clad, patchouli-smoking, sandal-wearing inclusionist. Um, <laughs> and um, look, maybe I've got a slightly different perspective than some people. You've been lovely. Thank you very much for your time. Um, <laughs> who brings me a beer in the evening. Don't, don't go just yet, Jonathan. Go ahead and have your next speaker. I'm afraid there's no sign yet of the next speaker. We've not been able to contact him. But on the plus side, although we're not familiar with his website about deletion PD, I mean, I've had a quick look at it about saving articles that have been deleted on Wikipedia. I think at a push, in the absence of, of having the, rather than having the room empty and nothing happening at all, I suspect, Jonathan, you and I could talk about um, inclusionism. Well, we could talk about inclusionism, or I could take a couple more questions on my well, last thing. That's what I would have, try and talk about the media, but it's, it's We'll have a few more questions in the hope that this gentleman turns up. So, Casper Suren, if you do turn up, let me know. Come straight down. Though, of course, how can I, how will he know if he's not here? <laughs> <laughs> so, any, any more questions on, on uh, Going off the boil. We'll have the questions on. Yes. I, I thought you were telling me I, I was running out. Of, I thought you were the time control. Then I started seeing 10 minutes down there. So I was trying to work out what this meant. Did that, did that mean you've got two minutes or you've got etc.? So yes. Yes.
that's 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 one thing. I mean, how we actually introduce people to to tools they haven't used yet is something that I'm I'm very keen to work on. I'm this is it's a little bit of what I do in my in my um, job for Wikimedia UK, where um, as as Glam organizer, one of the things we're doing with our outreach program is we're effectively cross training editors. Um, or, or, or sometimes we're specifically doing that. So, for example, G and I ran a program, um, ran, a, ran a training session. Um, was it last winter or the winter before on, on photography in museums? And that was a training session for, for editors. Um, now, that wasn't in terms of, of media wiki skills, but there are lots of things I have learned as an editor at Editathons in terms of this is this is how to do a citation involving an ISBN. A bad example because I can't actually remember how to do that one. That, but I did remember seeing that and thinking I need to practice. I need to do that when I'm editing on that. And there are a whole bunch of other things. I've taught people hotcat um, in editathons or in in pub meetings at a pizza restaurant on one occasion. I think there's a lot that we can do as a community to to train each other in in various skills. And one of the things I'd like to run at some point. Um, and I, I tried to get on the agenda for this place, is, is a session where people write down the things that they're willing to show somebody else in five or ten minutes and the things that they'd like to learn from other people um, and we match up like an icebreaker type thing and people have you know, five minutes of learning how, how catalogue works um, and for, for some people this can make a really big difference to the amount of editing they, they do, the amount of enjoyment they have of, of this hobby because you if you find take something which is t is fiddly and takes you a lot of time to do, and you find a quick way of doing it, that makes your life easier. I think it's going to make you um, increase the amount of editing you do, make your hobby of being a Wikimedian more enjoyable. Um, one of the things I've done as an admin on on the English Wikipedia is um, when we have new admins, I'm often the one who puts the note on the talk page saying, um, "Welcome to the Madhouse and so on." And, and when you when you get bored of trying to find the right block message, come and have a look at my mono book where some very kind person put some scripts there which give me a drop down menu for that sort of thing. And that it's that sort of cross training that I think we can potentially do. But we also need to think we've become closed as a community and are there ways in which we can either open up that closed nature of the community or find alternative career paths. And this is where gamification, we can learn something from that. Um, do we need to be talking about alternative career paths for new editors to get to the point where they feel I'm part of, I, I now feel part of this core community. And I think Glam has been good for that. Edu the ed education program with its education ambassadors has done some work on that because a lot of those ambassadors had only been with the community for a few months before they became ambassadors. Um, and this, the same sort of thing applies with um, uh, with chapters. Uh, we've got people who are involved in organising chapters who a few months earlier were readers of Wikipedia who hadn't actually edited. Um, there's a, a lady in, involved in Wikimedia Ireland whose first edit was made at an editathon in April this year. Um, an editathon that, for political reasons, I'll say merely was logistically supported by Wikimedia UK because it was in Dublin. Um, any any more questions, or have we got our new speak? <laughs> Has our next speaker arrived? Casper Suren, do come in if you're here. Oh, no. Plenty of questions. Oh, plenty of questions. Sorry, I, you, I I can't quite see the back. Um, gentleman um, in the mid row. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you. You just talked about admins. Yeah. Um, and I wonder you, you you talked about earlier on in your in your talk was the fact that the number of new admins people applying. I'm just wondering, presumably, although there's a, there's a lot of admins on English Wikipedia at the moment, there'll come a time when they drop down and, and mm. they get lower and lower and lower, to a time when it actually starts becoming a problem. It will and, indeed. And, and I was going to ask you, you know, what, what, what do you think will be the signs of that problem and, and, and when will that happen? It will happen? The canary in the coal mine is AIV, in my, my belief. Um, and the reason why I think that is that. Um, AIV, which is the, the notice board where vandal fighters go to say, I've, we've gone through all the, the warning messages and this, this person we believe an admin should go and block. Um, if you leave that um, without anyone looking at it for an hour or two, and you've got somebody who, who's been reported to AIV for an hour or so, um, and you don't block them, and they continue on a spree, 
then eventually you're you're very very quickly actually your vandal fighters are going to get um, pissed off that they no longer have at the moment the big guns are on the side of the vandal fighters um, but that really does rely on being able when you escalate to a certain point an admin will come along and block most of the other things we need admins for we can live with a 24-hour cycle of if at worst case the, our, our biggest group of admins is in the the US evening um, and at worst case um, we catch up in six or seven hours of the day that starts with the UK evening and ends with the US evening and 18 hours of the day a backlog builds up um, but AIV it would be a real problem if we got to that stage on there um, in terms of measuring the number of admins we peaked at 1022 active admins and we're down last I looked to about 700 or so the great thing that's, that's happened is that Admins, um, the, the generation we appointed of admins between 2003 and 2007, that peak generation, an awful lot of those people are still around. So be becoming an admin seems to be something that really extends your wiki career, which is another reason why maybe we should be trying to appoint more people as admins. Um, I've been keeping stats on the English Wikipedia on this for a very long time now. Um, and when I first started keeping stats, I was trying to prove to people that, yes, there was a drought at RFA. Um, we've now got to the stage where we've gone, we've gone from 300 and more admins appointed per year to um, more like 30. And nobody's arguing <laughs> that we aren't in a drought, but there have been some radical changes that, um, that, that also change the nature of adminship. So, um, a few years back, you needed to be an admin in order to use Huggle because um, only admins had rollback. And the point when rollback was unbundled and um, and thousands of people now have had rollback over the years, um, that was the point when the number of new admins fell off dramatically. So it's a classic example also of, of uh, it's very, you're measuring different things at different times. Uh, but we do have a declining number of admins and it will become a problem at some point because if we're only appointing um, one, or t one, two or three a month on the English language Wikipedia, then the number will continue to decline. So there was the uh, same row that's on the aisle, yes. Sir, you said. Do you think, you talked a lot about tax edits and the reversion of those, do you think um, similar issues with fair use images and the way those have been reverted or that had similar effects on editor, editor happiness. Are things getting a bit better now? Um, right, interesting one. Um, one of the things that I've been exploring as a introductory exercise for new editors is adding images to articles, but not touching fair use, but looking at commons. So I got somebody to create, uh, I got Rich Farmer to create a list of articles with a UK geocode and no photograph, no, no image. And in most cases, where more than half of them, we were able to find images on Commons. It was a relatively easy newbie exercise, um, and I'm, I'm keen to, to explore that sort of thing. And if you're adding an image to an article, it is highly unlikely that you're going to be reverted on that. Um, unless it's one of these ones where people keep adding screenshots off, off the television, and etc. But if you're adding an image that's already on Commons, to an article that, that doesn't have one. That's a pretty safe thing to do. Um, the fair use thing, that's one of the arguments that we as a community should resolve one way or the other. And I'm, I'm actually quite hostile to the, the fair use thing. I think it causes more trouble than it's worth, but I appreciate there are other people at the other end of the scale on that. I think it's one of those things where unless we can actually resolve it to the point where everyone's happy with it, situation we're going to continue to wind up biting each other um, there was another hand a row or two behind yes um, this is more a comment um, I run an undergraduate course where we have students editing articles on quite a large scale um, about places there in Britain um, I'm actually about to get an award for it but what, what that's to say I've got a lot of I'm making a lot of people edit articles right and I think the, uh, there is a very, very steep learning curve between simply adding assertions to an article and adding evidence, adding sources. And I don't think the templates have helped that much. Particularly, the templates don't.
Now, I, I must admit, I, for a long time, the only references I almost the only references I was had it were a a link to another website, um, the 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 phrase retrieved and a date, um, and maybe a description of that of that website I was doing, and, and I got um, eventually I learned a little bit more about citation. Um, to me, it was that was a relatively easy thing to do. But maybe uh, those people who are trying to do it through templates and so on, rather than copy paste, um, might, that might be a more difficult thing. And, and it, it, it's interesting to see, interesting to think of how we could make that more user friendly. Um, and going back to what the gentleman said about visual editor, one of the things areas where that was really really difficult was when it first came out, it effectively didn't support referencing at all, which was a bit problematic. Um, how, how they've managed to fix that or otherwise, I, I don't know in the meantime. I, I'm, I'm, I've kind of avoided visual editor. Sorry? It now has dropped it has. It has. It's so it's... Field by field field, it? Okay, so that one, that one has actually been fixed to some extent, but um, it's... It's still very new. There's a very exciting project that will fill in many of these automatically. Right. It's under development right now. Uh, we've... Okay, we've we've got things that where if you all you need to put it do is put the IS, the ISBN number in a particular thing and that populates most of that for you, um, providing the ISBN number on the book is correct. Um, and I had one that wasn't mm -hmm. recently. There's a new service that actually just takes a URL and converts that to a complete citation. So if you paste it in New York Times, ACM, all kinds of website for using the service called Zero. Okay. So maybe we need to be encouraging people to use that more. But how we how we integrate that to make sure that every new editor gets that at the right sort of point in their editing career, that that's a difficult one. And this is currently being integrated in the visual editor, and I believe that it's just going to be an API, so it can also be integrated into the normal text workflow. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds like we've got. Hope, hopefully, that will solve your your problem, sir. Um, any other questions? Or have, do we have? Has the next speaker arrived yet? Or Casper Suren, are you here? Okay. No. Uh, no. How are we doing for time? Are we has Casper run out of time? We've still got twelve minutes to fill. Still got oh, questions. Oh, sorry. We. Can, ah, yes. Lady, lady, about ten minutes up. Yes. Uh, do you think it might be a bit controversial? Do you think by having That's an interesting one. Um, I have online and offline met a couple of former vandals. <laughs> um, we had one young lady who came along to the London meetup at one, one point for a while while she was in London, um, who uh, after a little while rather embarrassedly admitted that, that a couple of years before her, she considered her wiki career to have started, she had actually won a contest amongst her schoolmates as the, the person in the class who'd managed the largest number of vandalisms before getting <laughs> locked. <laughs> and we, we all thought that was, that was hilarious and, 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 and the fact that you know, that was in her past and she was now late teens and etc. Um, so that's one example. I've met actually one or, one or two um, on the community who've, who've said, yes, I, I, I must admit actually, or I would admit now, when I was 13, whatever, I, I did some vandalism, I've come back again a couple of years later, etc. cetera. Um, I don't think the two communities overlap particularly. Um, there, there's, I, I, I doubt if, the, the, if they do, and, and even if they do overlap, I think the, 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 um, the people who have been, have did vandalism know they were doing some vandalism, had that blocked and reverted. It's not as if we, sent something down the, the electricity, um, the, the, down the power cable that then frizzled their computer or anything. Now, they just got stopped and their stuff was reverted. So I doubt if, I doubt if we're actually driving them away from Wikipedia forever. If anything, the fact that they get a series of very, of, of mild to, to severe warnings and so on, I, 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 I would be very surprised if that's really poisoning things. Where we do have a slight problem with overkill on the edit filters um, is that 
if you're going to start your career editing a subject where um, certain words related to human genitalia are inevitably going to come into the thing, then um, you're going to get blocked fairly quickly, with the, or you're going to have problems with the edit filters. And um, Edward and I and a couple of other people did an, an editathon at the Live Art Development Agency, and we, uh, and in the pub afterwards, we admitted that none of us had actually yet worked out what Live Art, that none of the trainers had worked out what Live Art was, but it certainly seemed to involve descriptions of various parts of human anatomy. <laughs> and I could understand why the previous editathon that those people had organised without involving the chapter had resulted in, in, in total chaos and the whole thing falling <laughs> apart and the IP being blocked. Um, sorry, there was another there was another question. I hope that answers your question on that. And gentleman in the third row. Yeah. Copyright violation is, yeah, that, now that's that's a really interesting one, which I, I haven't covered at all but um, in, in this, um, but there is an argument that, um, that copyright violation is a good faith thing. Um, it's good faith in that people don't actually know that you can't just take a copy of a, you can't just take a photograph of what's on your television screen and upload that to Wikimedia Commons. People are genuinely doing a lot of, an awful lot of copyright violation is genuinely done in good faith by people who want to improve Wikipedia, um, and we need to find ways of retraining those people without losing them. Um, and what's actually happened is that we've lost some long, some long-standing editors. Where it turns out that either when they started, or even quite long after the time after they arrived, what content they add. Um, is kind of copy pasted from sources where it shouldn't have been. So I, I'm, though I've done quite a lot of categorization on commons, um, by well, quite a lot of categorization there. I'm not familiar with the deletion process there. I've deleted a few, uh, rate, tagged a few things for deletion, um, but it wouldn't surprise me if 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 there was a big issue around that. Um, there's certainly a big issue um, on on Wikipedia. I don't know if we're treating copyright violation any differently than we were in um, six or seven years ago, um, and that's one of the reasons why I haven't included in this, because as far as I know, it hasn't really changed in the way we're treating it and the volume is involved. But if somebody comes up with a theory that it has, then that might actually contribute to how things have changed. Um, there was another hand up uh, from, um, yes, from a bear from... Um, no, but we're if you've... Uh, yes, hopefully, hopefully, by identifying the bits where people can literally copy and paste, as opposed to typing in from a book, we are catching almost all of it, and the people who are, who are reading a book and putting something in can't be bothered to 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 type in the whole of that paragraph they read in the book, and they're just doing a a small summary of it, which is kind of legit. But I I, I no, I do appreciate there is there is a problem there. Um, sorry. I went to Bugzilla several times, hate Bugzilla in many ways, but I went to Bugzilla several times to raise particular ones that could be done there. Or I found people have been trying to get trying to raise this on Bugzilla since at least 2006. Um, unfortunately, um, I, I, but I, I think to be to be fair to the developers, the more developer focused you are, um, the more 
a certain edit conflict is something you can resolve without thinking about it, so why is it an issue? Um, but there, there is a, how we can um, how we can have a non-developer feed into the priority of what the developer is doing is one of the big challenges facing this community. Um, and um, yeah, if you if you see Fabrice Florin where he's doing his thing, where getting people to do if you could if you could change one thing on Wikipedia, write it on this thing, and he's taking a photograph. Um, reducing edit conflicts. I I think it's the lowest hanging fruit that we have. In the, as a potential development, and I've been arguing that for, for years. It's even it's even more important to do than things like uni, um, universal watch lists, and um, I, 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 that's contentious. But I, I I think it's contentious to argue. I think it's even more higher priority than having a universal watch list um, would be. Uh, was there another? And have I run out of have I run out of two people's time now? I've got three minutes. Three minutes, so we've got time for six more quick questions. <laughs> or one with me waffling and an answer. Um, is there somebody at the, the back where I can't actually see hands going up? If so, just ra raise your question. If not, um, thank you very much for being a, um, an interesting and challenging audience. And I repeat my offer that I will be around drinking beer this evening. If you want my attention, come forth with a beer. They're free. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for thank you especially for filling in for Casper Suen. I mean, who apparently was going to talk to us about saving deleted articles and editor retention, but yet he's uh, deleted himself. <laughs> so I, I don't know quite if that counts as irony, but it does seem a bit odd. Um, anyway, thank you very much, Jonathan, and also thank you to Guillaume Pommier for telling us all about tech news and why we should all take a bit more interested in the technology underlying it, underlying it all and subscribe to tech news. And uh, thank you, everybody, for coming along uh, to Auditorium 2 today. I've really enjoyed hosting the room. Um, now, apparently, at the lakeside, there will be a group photo, and you'll be pleased to hear it stopped raining. Lakeside is when you come out of out of the, the, the front where there's just the water. Well, it, to call it a lake is perhaps a little, yeah, it's a little artistic license. Although apparently, having, I, I, I know I keep saying apparently, there's a million gallons of water in there, but it's not. It's called a lake, and then of course we have led on. We have someone called Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy Wales doing a closing ceremony at 4.30. So, group photo at the lakeside now, folks. Sorry? Yeah, I've come across the name.